Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode in my Dialing In series. Continuing on with the firmware 3.15 update that the fine folks at Line 6 have recently released. Today I am going to be taking a look at the Ampeg liquefier chorus effect. Now, a lot of folks say, well, we have a lot of chorus effects in the Helix. Why would we need this one? Well, this one is a little bit different. One thing that I like to do whenever I'm diving into a new model that we receive is, if at all possible, to go and find the original manual for the original device that's being modeled, take a look and see if there's anything special about it and what the original designers had in mind for it. And that way, getting a better understanding of it. So let's do just that. So here we are over in the Ampeg Liquifier Analog Chorus. Uh, product manual and if we scroll down it says the features of this is a dual chorus circuit design delivers incredibly rich chorus tones for both bass and guitar dial in the perfect sound with rate depth and effect level controls it goes further though it says about the liquefier analog chorus it says a chorus effect essentially copies the original signal slightly alters the timing using delay and combines it with the original signal i've talked about this in other videos before i recently did a video and how i really like to dial in my chorus for specific situations it says by adjusting various parameters a wide range of effects may produce just like a chorus of singers the combination of multiple slightly differing sources creates blurriness of both pitch and rhythm that makes the sound feel wider than the original. When used tastefully, chorus can add a very melodic presence to a bass line. It provides a soft, ethereal, sweeping effect that's useful for thickening and for making a particular sound pop out of the mix. It can also be used for all kinds of great specialized effects. But here's what makes the Ampeg Liquifier Analog Chorus pedal unique. Instead of just a single delayed copy of the original signal, the Liquifier makes two copies, and one of those copies is a polarity inverted mirror image. What happens next is that two separate triangle waves vibrate the pitch of the copies. These waves are linked so that as one copy rises sharply in pitch, the other falls flat by the same amount. As the pitches crisscross each other, some high frequencies cancel each other out in a comb filtering effect that rises. When the two copies are matched exactly in their pitch shift, they briefly disappear. This is also known as through zero flanging, a rarity in true analog effects pedals. All three signals, dry, delay, and polarity inverted mirror image are blended together via the effect level knob. The result is signal movement that swirls in a three dimensional manner. So we can see from that, that this is a slightly more interesting chorus effect. So I have a little preset set up here based around my normal little template that I use and I'm basing it around the new to firmware 3.15 line 6 Vaughn 2 amp model which I really really like. I also have the Ampeg Opto Comp at the end for just a touch of compression. A little bit of the new dynamic room reverb as well. I have three presets set up. Mono, stereo, and stereo sub to mono, and you might wonder what these are. So mono is going to have, if you notice, these two Ampeg liquefiers disengaged with this first one on. Uh, and this is a mono version of the liquefier. If I go to stereo, you'll notice that the mono version shuts off, this one shuts off, and this version here is a stereo version of it. <clears throat> and you'll notice that on the stereo to mono, what I've done is I've taken another stereo version, but I've put it before the amp just to illustrate something that's very important when dialing in these effects. And I've disengaged the other two. Starting off, we'll look at the mono version simply because this is going to be the most true to life version of this. The original pedal we just looked at the manual for is a mono pedal. There is no mono input to stereo output on it as far as I'm aware. Uh, so this is going to be the most accurate version of that pedal. So what we have is rate, depth, mix, and level control and headroom and a single dual type. So there's actually more controls on this than the original. If we go back and look at the original, all we have is rate, depth, and effect level, which would be similar or exactly the same as our mix level here, which is going to blend our clean dry signal with the affected signal. A lot of times people leave this on 50% just to get the proper balance between the dry unaffected signal and the affected signal. Again, coming back to our manual here, our rate control, it says rotate this knob to adjust the speed of the low frequency oscillator 
from minimum fully counterclockwise to maximum. That's nothing really special. That's what it's going to basically do on most chorus effects. The depth control rotate this knob to adjust the amplitude of the rate from minimum intensity to maximum intensity. The effect level we just talked about was just the mix control. Now that's where it ends here. So the interesting thing here is we have the ability to go between a single and dual. Now, without actually asking anybody or seeing any documentation on this, I'm guessing the folks at line six have just given us the ability to turn one of the delay lines off so that we are only using a single line chorus effect. Uh, and we'll explore that in a minute. So I'm thinking that the dual setting is going to be like the original. So the headroom control is in case we run into any distortion artifacts that we have in there where we need a little more headroom to avoid a clipping, we can just crank that up. That's not really going to affect the tone at all. So we won't really be talking about that unless we came across some little distortion artifacts that we had to deal with. So uh, again, so let's, let's listen to what this sounds like in mono. <laughs> If I turn that off, here's my original tone. Very nice. Now, if I crank that rate up. So some pretty zany effects can be had if we bring that depth down with the higher rate. Now if we change that to the single, So some pretty interesting effects. We're gonna go back to the duel for now. Let's do uh, this, rate way down, depth way up. So we can see lots of possibilities, uh, everything from, as the manual mentioned, kind of zany out there effects to just beautiful lush chorus effects. Now, if I just bring this back to maybe these settings, we'll go rate right with five and depth on 10. You'll see with the mix control, if I go down to zero, we're really getting just all dry signal. If I go all the way up to a hundred though, I'm just going to get the affected signal. Now, if I take that and change it to single, so we do get a difference between the two. So we can get some really interesting, crazy, zany effects here. So special effects would be uh, really nice with this. So if we just bring that back to a more normal setting though. Compared to when we blend that at 50%, the 50% is quite nice, more of a classic type of a chorus effect. Now, the single dual line, let's listen to this. We hear more movement. I guess we're not getting that phase cancellation of the two lines working against each other anymore. So a video I did recently was talking about how I like to keep my rate less with my depth higher. And you'll notice that when set in a single mode like this, more of the classic kind of chorus effect I kind of like this setting, but by bringing in the dual delay lines, there seems to be this phase cancellation going on. 
and it allows to get that rate up higher and we get a little less of that warbliness, out of tune warbliness. So a very lush chorus on that dual mode. Very interesting. Now here's what's so nice about the Helix is that we can also go to a stereo mode. And as we come over to the stereo version of this, we'll see we still have rate depth mixed level headroom and type, but we also have a spread control, which is there to widen the stereo effect of this. So let's take a listen to the exact same settings with the spread on 10 as compared to the mono version. So here again is the mono version, and I'll switch to the stereo version. <laughs> Sure, you can hear quite a difference if you're listening on a stereo setup. If you're listening to it on just a phone or a tablet out of a single speaker, you're not going to hear the difference between those two. So give that a listen on a good set of headphones. Now, basically, the spread control is going to give it that stereo width we were hearing. So that's it with the spread down to zero. I'm not sure exactly what it's doing, but I'm guessing maybe it's keeping the direct signal kind of more up the middle while taking these delay lines and spreading them out into the stereo spectrum more left and right. Quite possibly that's what's happening. It sounds something like that. Now, here's the issue though. If we were to take the stereo version of this and put it before the amp, we run into a problem. So here's another stereo version of this. And this is going to be the stereo to mono because what we're doing after this is we're sending it into a single mono guitar amp which is basically going to sum this to mono so with the exact same settings between the stereo post amp and the stereo pre amp before the amp you're going to hear a huge difference here's the stereo after the amp like we just listened to we lose that nice wide stereo effect because it's being summed to mono. So that's something we're gonna to have to keep in mind. Now let's compare the stereo to mono to just the normal mono version. Even though we're using the same settings on both, the mono version actually sounds better, and that has to do with this spread control. By summing this to mono, and then adding in this spread control, it's really canceling out some of the goodness of this chorus. So if we take that spread control down to zero on this one, it actually improves it if we have it summed to mono before an amp, and that's what this one sounds like now. <laughs> If we compare that to the mono version, it's a lot more similar now. So I would likely avoid putting the stereo version of this before any block that's going to sum it to mono. Uh, if I was using the mono version, uh, I may leave it before the amp. But we could also take a listen to how that sounds dragging it after the amp in mono. And that's really just going to be up to our own personal preference, what we like better. So again, comparing the three of these, if we bring our spread back up on this stereo to mono one here, we have mono. Here we have the stereo to sum to mono. And here we have the full stereo version. Which by far has the most lush wide sound for obvious reasons. So what do you guys think? I think this is a really fabulous addition to the Helix. This is 
quite possibly going to be my go-to chorus. Uh, it's very, very versatile. We can get everything from really zany effects to it. I love the fact we have the ability to switch it from a single to a dual delay line. I love the fact we've been given a stereo version. So very flexible. I think I may be getting a lot of use out of this. And I hope you guys enjoyed that look at this wonderful new model that we've received in firmware 3.15. And I hope you can implement it into your presets. Thank you guys so much for tuning in with me. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more Helix content, some more 3.15 firmware content as well. Thanks again so much for sharing your time with me. Ciao for now.